A very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Future Skills Prime event on Metaverse. During the session, you may share the questions in the Q&A functionality on Zoom. My name is Amrita from Future Skills Prime, the national digital skilling platform, which is a joint initiative of Ministry of Information Technology and Electronics and NASCOM. As Metaverse comes closer to our lives, and we have, an in, we have an interesting session planned for you today, which tells us all the nitty gritties of the bold new world so that we can all move towards it together. So without further delay, let us dive into the multiverse of Metaverse with Mr. Adib Muhammad, Solutions Consultant, Techfully. Adib is an AI ML blockchain expert who hails from South India and has worked with several MNCs, product companies, and co-founded several technology startups. Over to you, Adi. Hey, thanks, Amrita. Thanks, everyone. Um, Thank you for joining us, Adi. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. All right. So let me just get started. I'm just sharing the screen. Um, Give me one second. All right. Hope everything is visible and uh, you can hear me properly. All good, Adi. Great. Thanks, Amrita. Thanks for the brief introduction. It was really helpful. All right. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, enthusiasts here. I know everybody. Uh, thank you and uh, welcome to the uh, webinar. So I hope this uh, webinar will be productive for you guys, and uh, it's just a it's like a just like an appetizer for you uh, to venture into metaverse, right? So let's get into it, and hopefully this will be a wonderful session for you guys. All right. So um, yeah, Amrita did cover a little bit uh, and you know a brief introduction about me, but I still want to you know just emphasize what I've done and what is my core area of interest and what is my expertise is on. Right. I have 11 years of experience in the IT industry. Uh, I have a solution architected, a lot of solution, I mean, a lot of products. I've consulted with a uh, number of MNCs and uh, startups. I've led 50 plus projects and uh, traveled to almost six, seven countries, uh, mainly for you know, technology and uh, uh, all the latest bleeding edge technologies. And I'm a certified NFT and a metaverse developer uh, and a metaverse expert as well. So uh, my LinkedIn profile is right there. You can take a screen, screenshot or you can even scan it from your mobile and you can stay connected with me. All right. <clears throat> so now, uh, so let me just get, it, uh, get into the session. Let's start with a simple question. Like how many of you on this, I mean, on this uh, webinar knows about Meta Metaverse? All right. If you take the percentage of people who knows what is Metaverse, yes, obviously Metaverse is a, a very, uh, a very, trending term in the recent, is a recent times, uh, right from 2001, and right from when Meta changed its, when Facebook changed its name as Meta, right? So that's when Meta was really started, that word started booming. But Metaverse has been, uh, has been a word like few decades before itself, right? So now it is gaining interest. So what is Metaverse? Let's do that. Uh, let's check what it is. All right. So it not, I mean, like even in the percentage of people right now uh, in this call, there are a lot of people who might know what is Metaverse and people who doesn't know what Metaverse is and they want to learn what it is, right? So this is not like a basics. Uh, it's going to be a very sleep, uh, you know, very uh, sloppy ride. So what I want to do is do a little bit of recap on certain topics. Uh, it might be redundant for people who are already, uh, you know, expert in Metaverse, but still, it might give uh, the uh, a plain, plain level for everybody to understand what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about a lot of things. Okay, I'm going to talk about cryptos. I'm going to talk about um, blockchain. I'm going to talk about uh, IPFS. So all these terms may be too overwhelming for a lot of people here, right? So I don't want to, you know, bombard with a lot of information. I'll just take it slow. Uh, you can also stop me in between and you can ask me questions also. That is also fine. But otherwise, um, let's do a quick recap of what, of some of the technologies which are really relevant, All right? Okay. So uh, if you look at it, we're gonna see the history of web, how web has actually progressed. Okay, so first let's start with web 1.0, okay? I don't know how many of you have uh, heard about web 1.0 or, uh, 
this web 1.0 uh, because i feel very nostalgic because you now i was very very young when i when i was into internet and uh, some of these sites that you see here on this right side are uh, very nostalgic for me okay but if you are younger than me probably you wouldn't have not even seen any of these sites on the right side but yeah with that is because uh, from 1990 uh to 2009 that's when the web 1.0 was really famous and what is web uh, 1.0 it is just the first generation or you can say first stage of uh, world wide web right and the it is if you if you understand it properly if i have to give you a quick uh, understanding of what it is it is just static sites okay it is it is static web pages hosted on some free hosting sites or some isp servers um and these are just static static pages predominantly uh, all the web 1.0 websites were personal websites uh, where you want to showcase something or you want to show some information so that is what it was there is no interaction okay so you cannot interact with those uh, websites you can just look at some information take a note of it and then do something else okay so that is how web 1.0 was and if you look at it uh, think about it so web 1.0 advertisements were actually you know they were they were banned you should not be using advertisements in uh, web 1.0 right on the contrast web 2.0 is completely different but if you look at the design essentials of what what web 1.0 is like i said there is no interaction between the websites like right now you click on a button you get some information you search on it so all these things are not possible on web 1.0 which was in the, that era of 1990 to 2009 right and it is like i said it is also hosted in a uh, on a isp server right and it is served from the server so it will be one server and you know, all these uh, users will be accessing from uh, accessing this information from that particular server and talk about the design look at that design right now on the uh, on the screen it's very simple right it's very simple very plain uh, i don't know to call it uh, um, ugly but it was it was beautiful in that those period but still it was it is like that because the technology behind the web pages is also very uh, very nascent right so they were using uh, tables and uh, uh, no tables to design and position it so that is how it is right now uh, was designed right let's look at web 2.2 web 2.2 definitely i'm sure you guys would have you know uh, seen all these things you you feel very familiar you know to give you an example facebook is one of the best example that i can give you for web 2.2 uh, all the other social networking websites you know twitter linkedin whatever you call it so all these sites that people are using right now predominantly it is web 2.0 what is web 2.0 obviously it's the it's the next generation of web 1.0 um here we started you know a lot of it, uh, a lot of disadvantages from 1.0 was cut down and those were transitioned because right now you can actually interact with the websites right so you can search for some information based on that information you can again do some activity because the server actually responds to the user right so that is what web 2.0 is and you can actually uh, let me say like you, know, you can sort information you can permit some users so all these things can be done uh, on the web 2.0 so that is the next evolution it was it started around the year 2004 and uh, predominantly it got famous or around 2007 2011 okay so that's the era of uh, web 2.0 uh, so web 2.0 is exactly when um, we started using ajax Uh, so i know a lot, of, a lot of technical guys will be here on the webinar as well but for people who are not there or who don't know what is ajax is it is just uh, another technology with which you can update part of the information it's not like a page refresh part of the uh, information and right now everything is ajax okay so everything every information that you see on your social websites on facebook linkedin twitter instagram whatever it is it is all uh, inherently using ajax and uh, all these technology underlying technologies right and exactly this is the time people started using apis for the front end right okay i'm going to stop here right now okay let's look at the picture right now uh, if you look at it, the technology behind the web 2.0 is very simple it's, it's ajax css and rss that's how you get a beautiful looking website right and if you look at the design pattern uh, most of the uh, most of the websites are trendy uh, it is very stylish and it is very attractive to the user right and what is the functionality what was the extra function that uh, the users got 
when web 2.0 was famous what was it it is social networking media sharing user participation whatever you want to call it whatever we are doing currently is what uh, web 2.0 is now let's look at web uh, 2.0 as a, a different set of functionalities that people are using it for okay so i was saying like you know you do it for social networking yes obviously vast majority of people are using that but also people are using it for podcasting uh they're doing blogging uh some of you might be familiar with that and then uh you can also get information curate your website based on rss feeds okay so most of uh the web 2.0 users are also using that that feature to make their websites you know dynamic and uh, user interactive right and then you go uh, there is also web content routing also okay and obviously that that comes to social media uh, where you get the ads uh, the promotions of your uh, promotion of your post uh, interaction uh, likes comments all these things are interactions so this was not possible uh, in web 1.0 and this is now possible in web 2.0 Okay, so that's it. So that's the uh, crux of what Web 2.0 is. Now let's talk about Web 3, right? It's not Web 3.0, it's called Web 3. Uh, it started since 2021. Okay, so why is there a need for Web 3? So what is wrong with Web 2.0, right? So if you look at the graph here, it's very, it's, it's very interesting actually. So if you look at the graph here, um, um, on the Web 1.0, Right. So on the web 1.0, you see here, uh, everything was decentralized at that point in time uh, uh, during 1990s and uh, uh, between that uh, period, if you look at it, Internet was a bunch of computers connected together. That's all right. It's not like a, a huge uh, server like, you know, a, a server provider like a Facebook owning a lot of data. It's not it was not like that. It was like connected computers to one particular uh, network. So that is what it was. So lot of information was decentralized okay and because of a lot of uh, uh, hesitations between the users there was no interaction then come then came the web 2.0 which was a decline uh, decline on the centralization so which means uh, with 2.0 we started losing the decentral option and we had very closed central centralized solution what is closed centralized solution Think about uh, Twitter, for example. So Twitter, obviously, you would have heard like, you know, uh, there's a huge news going on about uh, Elon Musk acquiring uh, Twitter. A lot of things are going on around that, but I'm not talking about it. So let's say you have your tweets, right? So you're posting your tweets on Twitter. Where is it getting stored? Have you ever thought about it? It's not on the cloud. Yes, obviously, it is, uh, it is stored somewhere, uh, somewhere in a server. But who is owning it? it's it's not you right you are not owning your content it is twitter server or the twitter as a company owns your tweets whatever you do whatever your profile picture is whatever your tweets are all these things are stored in one particular huge centralized server same goes with any of the social media that you're using you know uh, talk about facebook talk about instagram you really don't own the content it is owned by somebody else you're just uploading all these information to their server and you're just interacting with it that's how you have to say it because that is the difference web3 is actually bringing what is now let's look at compare it with web3 web3 is the next generation uh, obviously uh, from web2.0 and it is it is actually going against that policy of centralization okay so here it is the data we talk, talk about data data is not owned by one particular company or one particular person okay so it is like it is shared between all the people okay it is shared between everybody that's how you that's how that is the concept of web3 okay so now if i say okay web3 in web3 uh, uh, twitter and facebook and instagram they are they are just decentralized system no it is not just that okay so that is it is just one use case you can use web3 but again uh, it can be much more so web 2.0 was more of a ui inclined uh, inclined solution now web3 is actually back end or uh, the behind the screen everything is changing okay so how you store data how the data is getting transmitted how people are in interacting with it and how users can actually modify what they can do is what Web3 is providing. Okay. 
Now, why are we talking about Web3 in Metaverse? Right. So this I, this was supposed to be a session on Metaverse, but why are we talking about Web 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0? Yes, it is important because without Web3, uh, if you talk about Metaverse, it's just a virtual reality. That's all. Okay. So it is evolving. The uh, web standards are evolving and it is actually pushing towards this Metaverse. This is how the flow of you know evolution started. So we have to know, we have to understand Web3 better to really understand what is metaverse. Otherwise, it's just a virtual reality, right? So that is the that is the crux of it. Okay. So that's why we are, I'm focusing a little bit on Web3. Uh, so if you look at uh, the differences between 1.2 and uh, 2.0 and Web3, uh, the content uh, generated or published was very, very high. It is like 99% of the content on Web 1.0 was published by somebody. Right, user cannot create data. Right, user cannot create data. It was like 99% of every information out there on Web 1.0 was all published data. Okay, Web 2.0. Yes, uh, it is still a published data. Uh, we have a vast majority of people who also produce content. Like um, you can think about any. Uh, you know, uh, I don't want to give some names, but uh, you can think about uh, Instagram shots or YouTube shots, whatever you Instagram reels, right? So all these are contents, user creating contents. But still, if you look at the percentage, it is not more than 30%. Okay. But it is also controlled by somebody, some centralized companies like you know all these uh, social media companies. Now, Web3, almost 70 percentage of the data. Uh, is your data? You own the data. It is generated by the by the user, and maybe some portion of the system or some portion of it will be owned by the companies. So that is how the main difference is. Why is it important, right? So semantic web, semantic web is something is the next generation. So uh, let's say for Google, like you go into a Google uh, and then you search for some keywords, you get some results, right? If you understand what what Google has done. Uh, to get that information on your first page, it's really interesting. They have an algorithm. Uh, they have a keyword-based searching algorithm or even sophisticated algorithms to get that information for you, right? So it's not some person who's sitting there and getting those information for you. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an AI or a, some kind of a bot that is sitting there, which can just retrieve that information and give it to you, right? But semantic web is completely different. It's, it's like you, it, it, it understands you, okay? If I go and say pizza, if I search pizza right now, I might say I might see Domino's pizza, I might see Pizza Hut, whatever it is. Okay, but if if on Web three, if I have all my information fed into the system on a Friday night, if I say pizza, it's gonna bring me Swiggy. Okay, it's gonna bring me some some kind of an ordering system because it understands every day, every other Friday, um, I usually order pizza on seven o'clock. Okay, so it knows. Who knows? It's not a single system. It, it is the system uh, that knows that. Okay, so it knows that and it says, okay, you want if I search pizza, it's not going to show me Domino's has done that, Pizza Hut has done that. No, it's going to take me to the exact place where I want to land, to a Swiggy site, where I can uh, order the pizza and get it. Even it can also, you know, suggest me, okay, this is what you have been eating and this is something that is new and take it. Up. So that is how web, uh, semantic web and AI uh, has been progressed and we are actually expecting Web 3.0 to have it. Uh, and also Web 3.0 has just started. It takes a little bit of time to measure it. But this is a very major part in Web 3.0 or Web 3. Okay, 3D graphics and connectivity. Yes, uh, so this is where the metaverse really comes in. Okay, so all the things that I was talking about is all the backend stuff. Okay, so metaverse is not front end. It is not just the 3D, uh, 3D environment. It is all the backend stuff as well. So that's why I was talking about all these things. Now comes the presentation layer. Okay, so metaverse, if you think about it, it is just an another reality uh, people are People are calling it as an another reality. You can just go into that and experience uh, your environment completely different. Okay, so you can interact with the building. You can actually walk into a stair. Uh, you can talk to a different uh, person. You know, you can interact with them, get their business card, and then even call it on the. I mean, call them on a real, uh, no, real world. So it is also possible. Okay, so all the things that you interact will be 3D objects, and, and uh, all the for the, all the 3D objects or you no, know, all these interaction and connectivity is very very important okay so every piece of information that you create or you do is actually transacted on a blockchain 
okay so it is all it is right there it is decentralized we'll be seeing that uh, in a minute i'm also going to show you a, a demo of what metaverse is actually going to shape up uh, there are a lot of uh, companies that are already working on it i have got access to that and then i wanted to share that with you guys as well okay so we'll see the, we'll cover a lot of about the 3d stuff on uh, during the demo session all right so let's move on um okay so we talked about talked about a lot of things like that you know the comparisons and all those things if you look at it um, the content on web3 it's going to be 3d it's blockchain it is ai right so that is what the content is and use cases are very 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 you know vast so decentralized finance uh, so you can you can buy sell uh, you can lend without any third party third party you know right now if you have to buy something or if you want to sell something you actually need a credit card or a debit card or a bank right so basically you need a bank to do all these transactions we are talking about a decentralized finance system okay web3 is actually providing you all these information which means you can send money to me directly uh, without the help of the bank okay so is it is it real money is it rupee is it us dollars no that is a different question right so it is it, it could be a cryptocurrency right it is a cryptocurrency it is a digital currency that you can send me uh, you can lend some money i can also send it back it is all backed by smart contracts we'll see what is smart contract in a minute but understand so these are all the use cases that people are using it is very very famous in games okay gaming is very one of the best use case uh, right now uh, in metaverse and nfts we going to talk about nfts a lot um, and then what about the challenges so the challenges is primarily uh, protection uh, or also cyber crime okay so since it is blockchain it comes with a predefined unbreakable solution of uh, you, know, you you nobody can hack it that's the that's the best notion that i can give but again it is not 100% foolproof right people have proved that it can be broken okay there are a lot of tricks people use to you know break into a blockchain system and it is not the, it is not the best or, or it is a fortress right it is still the best solution uh, when compared to a lot of other solutions but still it is also unbreakable so that is another information or that another drawback or a challenge that we can see which might improve in a, uh, you know in the upcoming years how can i give you an example for web 3.0 so i uh, most of you might have used alexa right amazon alexa if you have used it you can just put uh, yes on the uh, or you can say yes in the comment section or the chat section yeah so you would have used uh, amazon's alexa isn't it yeah i'm seeing a lot of responses thank you thank you for that uh, you would have used apple siri uh, right apple siri is also something that is very predominant people a lot of people are using it so are you typing anything here so let's say if i want to know what is the weather right i'm not doing anything i just do a wake up call right say hey alexa or hey siri uh, tell me what is the uh, uh, what is the climate looks like right now right so that is all, that is all i'm doing this is the next generation so it understands me so it understands where i am actually sitting right now okay think about like 10 years before uh, when you had internet can you say what is the climate no it will not work like now you have to say what is the climate in chennai what is the climate in uh, hyderabad what is the climate in uh, delhi that's how you have to search right now the system understands you it knows you are actually sitting in uh, uh, in uh, you know in uh, himalayas and if you are asking for what climate is going to give you the exact temperature where you are sitting okay if you are in um, goa and if you are asking what is the temperature it's going to say it's going to be very sunny today and enjoy the day right so that is how the system starts interacting with you without without you realizing a lot of information or a lot of things about you is being understood by the algorithm and it is able to respond to you faster all right okay now let's let's jump to the metaverse right so that's what that's what you guys are here for um we've talked about all we've recapped what web is we have talked about a lot of things uh, we have talked about a little bit of you know uh, uh, information here and there but yeah let's go into the actual crux of it let's go into the metaverse okay what does metaverse stands for then let's split it meta means beyond verse is a short form for universe which means it is a it it means like 
it's an another universe or beyond our universe beyond our reality what is reality i am sitting here i can actually take a cup of coffee and drink here right so that is my reality um what is beyond your reality you can you can actually go and visit uh, maybe in new york times square right now sitting here uh, in one of the south indian cities i can actually do that if i can do that then it is a it is a beyond reality that's what they call it as better question okay so that's just a you know playing of words it's a very good uh, meaning it's it, it, this word metaverse is not a new one it's there for like i said it's there from the beginning it's like uh, almost two decades before you know you would have heard about metaverse in few several books uh, i can share you the links later okay what is metaverse now let's talk about metaverse so you know what is you know what is the meaning of metaverse but what is metaverse metaverse really or generally you know known as uh, a virtual space you know where you can interact with 3d uh, characters and uh, augmented realities or it can be a mixed reality uh, that is what is called as metaverse okay so i can actually sit here have my uh, a meta uh, have my goggles or you can call it you know uh, amr uh, goggles there are a lot of things like that you know oculus quest and all those things right so you can have it on your head and you can actually visit any of the places that is available okay right here in the city you can do that if you can do that that's called metaverse okay that's one of the metaverses we're going to see a lot of types of metaverse i'm going to show you some examples and uh, demos as well uh, okay so what is this so metaverse is not just the 3d uh part which people think okay so there are a lot of things behind it let's look at all the technologies that that you uh, that is used to construct a metaverse right so first thing if you look at here uh, it's the blockchain network right you have to have a blockchain uh to call it metaverse because all these data that you are generating is all um embedded in the blockchain it is all transacted it is all maintained in the blockchain i see a lot of questions probably you know we'll take the take the questions you know a little bit later uh, but in the interest of time i'm going to address all these questions uh, uh, what i'm saying here all right so block, blockchain is one of the uh, important technologies that you need that is where the decentralization comes in okay so what is crypto networking and cryptocurrency yes cryptocurrency is it mandatory no it is not mandatory but it is part of that blockchain or it is part of the metaverse uh, use case it is part of that uh, you know uh, uh, what do you say ecosystem right it is part of the ecosystem because when you say decentralized um, reality obviously you have to buy something you have to sell something you have to do renting all these things has to happen you cannot do it with the real money right so we are talking about meta so which means it's completely out of your reality but you have to have some transactions happening transactions are recorded on the blockchain but for the actual purchase you have to use cryptocurrencies but is it mandatory it is not mandatory but it is part of the ecosystem okay let's talk about mixed reality and extended reality okay ar and vr okay so this is a very famous term uh, probably you would have heard about in the last 5 years you know it was very famous you have your uh, augmented reality uh, options all the filters that you are using on instagram uh, where you can change your face into a tiger or um, uh, or you can you know for, for there are a lot of malls that are giving experiences of vr you put that headset and then you sit on a uh, sit on a egg egg shaped you know shell you experience the complete thing you actually sit on a roller coaster and you experience how a roller coaster works right so that is vr okay so these two are combined as mixed reality which is what a lot of people are using right now for the metaverse and extended reality is the next part right so you can actually walk you can it's like a treadmill there is a treadmill that that's out there you can actually walk on it the more you walk the real in the meta world you can actually experience it right you can you don't have to sit and you can you don't have to do it you can actually sit you can walk and do all these things that's called the extended reality now comes the nfts why is nft here like why should we do not use cryptocurrencies for trading nft is completely different okay so nft is going to give you a lot of sense when i show you the show you the demo uh, so nft is the proof of ownership right so how do you prove yourself that you are owner of that house 
right in meta uh, in real world if i if i come and ask you okay show me the proof of your car you're going to show me that rc book right we call it rc book or the auto card id right you're going to show me that as a proof you won't accept it right people will accept everything but in the meta world let's say you have a house and somebody just walks in and asks okay show me your id what do you, what are you going to show you don't have an id right so, so that is nft okay anything that you want to show as a proof of ownership it is going to be nft in the metaverse okay we're going to talk about it in a, in a minute all right uh, so you see on the right side we have a uh, very beautiful representation of what uh, what an nft or what a metaverse might look like or what it is actually looking like currently okay um, so everything is unreal except you okay in the metaverse you are real you are actually having a headset and you are interacting let's say you are interacting with uh, you are walking on a stairs it is not a real stair it is it is 3d object right so except you anything that you interact is not real okay so people also buy land um uh people buy land people uh, have avatars uh, they have buildings they own arts all these things are uh, you know you can actually own these things in metaverse right land building uh, you you can change yourself you can look like a, a famous marvel character or uh, any of your superheroes whatever you want to you know, look like you can actually look look like them uh, by owning nfts okay so that is also one of the uh, big thing that you can do in metaverse and it also allows uh, us to explore different environments for example you can walk into one particular environment and attend uh, a business meeting right like 4 to 5 5 pm you are actually attending a business meeting and 5 to 6 o'clock you want to attend a party you can just do it in just a click right so you can actually visualize uh, a event where you are attending and then you can just swap it and you will be in a different metaverse environment where you are joining your friends for a virtual party that is also possible okay what is the basic foundation of metaverse right like you know we talked about a lot of technologies behind the metaverse what is the foundation obviously it is the internet right so you need to have internet and this internet has to become uh, you know more of a it has to be more decentralized right uh, right now it is all centralized that the data is owned by few of the companies it should not be like that uh it will evolve into a stage where the data is transmitted everybody owns everything like all the the data is owned by everybody all right so that is internet uh so that's one of the base criteria obviously second one is open standards of media why am i talking about this because if you look at it if i was sh just showing you a few pictures we have not gone gone into the demo yet uh we are going to interact a lot with 3d objects right so we are going to look like an object we are going to look like a superhero we might look like a robot or whatever it is so it is not real it's a 3d object it has to be fast it has to be instantaneous um the audio the text the images everything has to have a proper rendering uh, there's a, there has to be a proper standard so open standards of media provides that then comes the open uh, programming language uh, standards basically javascript html webgl or uh, webex or whatever you want to call it. so these are the base technologies for creating metaverse okay for coding metaverse then um what about hardware yeah hardware uh, yes uh, you need to have your uh, mixed reality headsets you need to have your virtual reality headsets or augmented reality google glasses whatever you want to call it. yes that is an important piece so then comes the decentralized ledger Yeah, I'm just going to minimize. It. Yeah, decentralized ledger blockchain uh, itself is what you know they are referring as decentralized ledger here, and smart contracts is pretty much uh, the logic behind it. Let's say I want to send five hundred rupees to, or I want to, I want a logo design. Okay, I'm going to give you a use case. I want to design a logo. I'm going to give you some. I mean, you are the you are the uh, designer. I'm going to give you some money, and you're going to give me that. Okay. so i am going to give you 100 dollars in digital currency right you you are doing the work and you are showing me the proof of work like you know i have done it 
and I don't like it. Okay. So whatever I have, amount that I've paid will come back to me automatically to my wallet because it is embedded on the smart contract. Let's say I liked it. So you have given me that, uh, given me that logo and I've liked it and I click on yes, then only that amount will actually get into your wallet. Okay. So these are all the kind of rules that you can set uh, when doing these transactions. These rules can be done in the format of smart contracts. That's how you have, you can just, you know, in simple words, that, that is all it is. All right. Okay, so there is a lot of, you know, I have been interacting with a lot of people in the industry uh, regarding metaphors, and I understood that people did not understand the difference, different platforms of metaverse, right? Metaverse platforms are completely two different platforms. Okay, so one is blockchain based platform and the other platform people usually call it as metaverse is referring to the virtual world. Okay, so let's look at what are, what are the exam, I mean, uh, what are the examples of these two examples? Okay, extended reality. What is extended reality metaverse? This is a sec the, these are the two platforms, extended reality and uh, blockchain based metaverse. Uh, in the extended reality, uh, you use your headsets, uh, the hardware to interact with uh, the digital characters. Uh, you interact and play with somebody, you join a meeting, have virtual parties, all these things will happen uh, using your devices. Right. You don't have to really, have, you know, you don't really need cryptos here. You don't need really need digital currencies. You're just going there, you know, enjoying with your friends. You're connecting with people and you're coming back. Right. So all these things you can do on this extended reality platform. So these are the examples. If you look at, you know, uh, you can just take a note of it. Also, Techfully provides a lot of solutions around metaverse. Uh, so one of the one of the best solutions I've, I've seen is the life fair and meta right now if you look at it they have a horizon uh horizon uh that's what they call as uh, metaverse in their term and if it is if you look at it there is no interaction you, you cannot uh, do any purchase or sell uh, you can just use um you can interact with people you can communicate with them uh, it is very you know, fun and uh, fun to experience. Crypto voxels is also something uh, very similar to what I was talking about with the life fair. Yeah, you can just check that. Uh, I'll show you the links and the demos and all those things in a little bit. But let's look at blockchain based metaverse. Okay, there are two major examples. There are a lot of blockchain based metaverse, but the most famous are right here, the sandbox and the center line. Okay, so why are they famous? Because, you know, they have been the uh, frontliners. They have started this uh, things like you know five years ago and then they are running it very really successfully a lot of adoptions like a lot of people snoop dog if you know um, if you heard about snoop dog probably most of you would have known what uh, who's uh, who snoop dog is he owns a lot of uh, a large part of decentral land um, and he's actually one of the one of the pioneer in this particular industry who is the first one to adapt into metaverse Right, similar to Sandbox, uh, it provides NFTs as your character. You can actually choose your character as a game. It's not even a game, it's just a real world. You can just walk in and then you can just look like a, a crocodile or you can look like a superhero. A lot of things you can do, but you have to purchase this uh, using digital currencies. Okay, specific digital currencies. They have uh, Sand and Mana. So these are the cryptocurrencies that they're using for these purchases. Okay, so now that we have clear, like, you know, what is Metaverse, there are two platforms, one with cryptocurrencies and one with uh, extended reality platforms. Now we understand what it is, right? So now let's look into the demo. Let's quickly go into demo. I'm just going to share uh, my screen. Okay, so I've talked about Lifeware a little bit, right? What is Lifeware? So Lifeware is in a simple word, I mean, it is a virtual expo. Okay, so I'm just going to log in. Okay, it asks me for a system check and collaboration. Just click on continue. Right now, my metaverse uh, is getting loaded right now. Takes a little bit of time because, you know, like I said, it's all 3D objects, right? It, it takes time to render and all. So now it is 
it is right there. I can just click on start. Okay, so now I've logged in as somebody. If you look at, I'm just going to show you a little bit around here. Okay, so this is the virtual world I was talking about. Okay, so you just joined this virtual world right here. And if you look at it, it looks beautiful, right? It looks like a real expo, not as real as a real expo, but yeah, it is definitely a, a expo. If you look into, if you go into here, you see a person sitting there. You can see a lot of sofas here. You can see a map of what you're going to do. And you can, you, you can also see game area. Uh, oh, I can see somebody is also here. Uh, so this is another person. Uh, who I can chat with also. So imagine uh, you and your friends are, you know, you and your friends want to visit some place, right? So you can actually go together. You can talk to them. You can actually chat with them. Okay, so these are all not real people, right? So this is like a reception desk. You can actually get some information here. You can click on it and you can say, okay, so these are all the information available or these are all the stalls available. So this is basically an expo, all right? So expo means you would see a lot of companies or, uh, uh, you know, companies may, mainly looking for uh, interviews or comp uh, colleges looking for admissions. It could be anything. Right? So this is how a real world stall would, would look like. And if you look at it, I can actually interact with this stall right here. I can click on it. I can click on a video or I can download a browser right here. Right? I don't want to do that. I just want to experience this world. Okay, if I walk here, you can also see a lot of things right here. So let's say I download some interactions or if I click on that particular person, what happens is it, it actually stores those information for me, okay, in blockchain. So any of the transaction that you're doing will be, you know, stored in blockchain right now. And I was having somebody with me. Okay, he seems to be interested. So what I'm doing is I'm going to walk inside. Uh, maybe my friend, I can actually walk, uh, walk with them and we can attend uh, presentations, okay? So I'm just gonna click case. I'm not gonna sit through the entire one. So it is just like, you know, attending some webinars or uh, some class, okay? So it's very interesting, you, know? you can just walk with them, I can talk with them, or you, you can even you know, go into the networking launch. If I go back, I can just show you, it's the networking launch, right? Can go inside and you can actually see a lot of people will be there here you know who a lot of uh whoever is available today uh, i can see them and i can actually talk with them i can do networking like how you do it on the real world right so you can actually do that uh here as well okay Interesting. So these are all the objects that I was talking about. These are all 3D objects. Uh, it's like a robot, right? It's like a uh, it's like a, a robot that has an iPad on top, which has my face on it. Okay, so that's how the uh, this is designed. But let's say I want to look like uh, I don't know. Maybe I want to look like uh, a famous character. Maybe like a, a Superman. Right? Superman is a, is a family character. I want to look like Superman. When I walk in, when somebody wants uh, sees me, they want to see me as a Superman. If I have to do that, what I have to do is I have to go and buy something uh, that looks like Superman. Okay, so that's NFT, right? If I own that NFT, when I log into the system, instead of the default robo robotic thing, I would actually look like a character. I can actually walk, I can talk, all these things I can, I can do. Okay, so that's how NFTs uh, are used by some of these systems like Decentraland or Sandbox or Layfair, uh, etc. Okay, let's let's look at something, uh, some other example. Like this is another example. It's called a crypto vaccine. Uh, you can actually click on it. I'm going to share all these uh, I don't know, links in a minute. Okay, so don't worry. It's called crypto vaccines. Okay, so if you see here. Uh, very similar to life fair. Uh, you can actually walk. I don't know if you're hearing the footsteps. Uh, so here, this is an example where you're not a robot, right? Uh, you you look like a a wooden doll, right? So for the obvious reasons. But if you if you take a note, look at it. This person is wearing hat, right? Which means he probably bought that NFT, okay, a hat, and he stole it. 
that's how he is using that hat. He's having a cooler and he's also smoking right now. He's doing that because he has an NFT that looks like that. And because of that, I can see, okay, he's having a, a cool NFT or a cool hat. Okay, so all these things are being used internally and I can see somebody is walking between me and uh, them. They're trying to have a conversation. It's really nice, right? So this is how Metaverse is going to evolve. This is how it is going to be. I'm not saying this is the, this is how it is, but this is the stage we are in currently and we're going to evolve uh, in a minute, right? So we will be talking about NFTs and probably by then you would see this body of uh, yard club. Let's quickly go to the session um, and let's let's try to understand what is NFT. Um, I'm clicking on it. Just give me one second. All right, now we are into NFTs. Okay, what is NFT? I've talked about a little bit of, about NFT as well. NFT is nothing but uh, a unit of data stored in blockchain that proves that you are the owner. Okay, so that is NFT. Second, uh, the, uh, the property of NFT is it is non-fungible. What is NFT? It is non-fungible token. What is fungible means uh, it can be replaced or it, it can be replaced by another unit and you won't even know. Think about Bitcoin, right? If I have a Bitcoin and you have a Bitcoin, there is no real difference between my Bitcoin and your Bitcoin. It is one and the same, right? It doesn't matter, okay? But what about NFT? Uh, so let's say you see this uh, ape right here. Uh, so this is costing around 200 ethers. And uh, this probably is 300 ethers, which because it has a little bit of different rights. Rare, rarity, they call it rarity. Uh, because of these rarities, the cost of the NFT might also go. Okay, so it is not the same, right? So this NFT is not same as this one. It is completely different. And it, you can say, okay, I'm going to right click on this and download the uh, download the image. Yes, obviously you can do it. You own that picture, but you do not own that NFT. Okay, only one person get to have this bold ape. Uh, on his wallet, okay? He is the only person who can really say, I own this art, okay? Even though you have it stored, it doesn't make any sense because when you use it on a real use case, let's say Board Yacht, uh, a Board Yacht, Yacht Club is coming up with a virtual platform like Lifeware and you have to have a ape, a Board Ape to enter into it. Okay, even though you have downloaded the images, I have seen a lot of people say, you know, NFT doesn't make any sense because I can download that image and keep it in my. No, it doesn't work like that. It is just to show you are the owner of that, right? So because I have the uh, ape in my wallet, if I log in, I would look like this particular zombie, uh, zombie looking ape. I can actually interact with my friends. I can actually go and attend parties. I can do a lot of things that I was just doing right now right so that is the beauty of nft okay if you understand the use case if you understand understand the background of it nft is not just image okay what is benefits people are calling nft as digital gold but uh, you know it's, it's it's not like that okay so you have to do your own market research it is not like that don't go blindly into nfts no you have to do we have, we have to be very careful. So there are a lot of people who scam a lot of you know, legitimate users like you and me. Okay, it's called drug pool. Don't get into that. Okay, so you have to do a lot of research before even buying or thinking about entering into NFT market. Okay, you have to know what it is. You have to know what it works, how it works, right? NFT is not for trading. It is to show you or show something that you own that particular image or uh, that piece of art. Okay, that is all it is. It's not for trading. You, you cannot say I'm going to buy this for 100 Ether and tomorrow it's going to go up and I'm going to sell it for 200 Ether. No, it doesn't work like that. It might be like that, but it is not intended for that. Okay, so that is what people are missing uh, when we talk about NFT. And there is also the authenticity, right? Because I said, you because you own that particular ape in your wallet, only one person can do that. You are authentic, right? You only you can say I'm the owner of it, and you can you can log into that metaverse and you know enjoy the metaverse. If I don't have it, I cannot do it. Okay. 
so that is it and uh, it so and nft is very synonymous like in the market right now nft is very synonymous with digital work but it is not like that it can be more right it can be a piece of paper nft can be a piece of paper it can be a music it can be a book uh, it can be your house it can be your teslas yes you can actually tokenize your house and you can own that okay so when you say okay i'm going to lease it to somebody you can give that using smart contract you can actually lease it okay so all these things are different use cases that are coming up uh, but not right i mean they have a very slow curve right now but yes it's going to it's going to be there in few years definitely if you look at this uh, the picture right now you see art and collectibles in 2021 i'm talking about 2021 which is the year of nfts and metaverse uh, which is where the the entire crypto market everything was at boom right it was at the peak right now not right now but 2021 uh, so the art and collectibles are the known part of nfts but if you look below the horizon you can say nfts can be a brand uh, nfts can be used in games nfts obviously will be used in metaverses and it can also be used as off chain assets what is off chain off chain assets it can it can also exist outside of the uh, you know metaverse it can be used in a reality as well think about you are going to buy some um, uh, subscription or you're going to go and buy something like maybe uh, a package a tour package right uh, it may be costing around 5 lakhs 5 lakh rupees it might be an nft okay you own that nft you use the nft you travel across the globe you go to all these tours and come back then you realize okay i'm getting too old i want to sell this package right now you cannot do it okay uh, but if it is an nft you can actually put it on the marketplace somebody who is younger who is a travel freak they can actually buy that for a more expensive price and also you get to enjoy your benefits and they get to travel across the world okay so this is one of the use case where i'm saying nfts can be used in the real world as well it's not just art okay so what's the best use case that i can describe is uh, board yard board yard club i get i know i get confusing names it's called bayc okay bayc right now it has it has a lot of famous people owning it especially because it's very very expensive if you look at the price of bayc of any of one of the apes it is very expensive it, it cannot be afforded by a a normal person it ha you have to be a celebrity or you have to be a millionaire or billionaire at least to get these nfts on your wallet okay so that is that is uh, that it has become a social status so if you look at people like who are all the people who are owning nfts i've given some of the names it's not just few names that a lot of people i'm just giving you some famous names like justin bieber eminem snoop dog obviously neymar is a football player obviously you know that uh, mark cuban so he is one of the shark tank one of the biggest investor jimmy fallon uh, he he has a very uh, he he runs a show a uh, very famous one uh, so if you know him it'll be great you know Sha shakil o'neil uh, so he is also uh, into nft and uh, he has a very beautiful uh, uh, bayc ape you go and research on it marshmallow and chain smokers they are, they are the music guys right so yeah so these are the famous people who are, who are owning it and this has become a status symbol right so previously it used to be like if you have a rolls royce if you have a mercedes or even a ferrari that's how you you showcase everybody that you're rich right you showcase that and you say exclusivity right so that how that is how it was coming right now this nft has become a market where it has become a social symbol Right, that is one of the use case where NFT is getting used right now. Okay, this is very interesting. So Audis or Audius they call it. Okay, so it is very similar to Spotify, but it is the Web3 version of it. So Spotify owns all the music, right? Right now, Spotify has all these music. You have to pay them and you have to listen to it. And whoever the owner, then you are not paying them. You are paying actually the service provider. Here, audience is actually taking away all these things. Okay, so if I am the music creator, and if you like my music, you can actually look at it. And the more people looks at it, or more people, you know, downloading those streams, I get benefited. 
the actual user gets benefited. There is no middleman. There is no Sony. There is no the the layer of you know, uh, you know the middleman here. They, you know, it's completely taken away. So it is a, another very good in, uh, example where your music is actually an NFT here, audio. So just check that out as well. It's very interesting and it has uh, it has got a lot of users as well. Okay, now let's go into the some of the questions. Okay, so we don't have much time. Uh, should we believe in hype? No, never believe in hype. Always do your market research. Okay, so is NFT crypto? Is, is, is it is it booming uh, or is it is it is also going down re recently in last few weeks okay so you never believe in hype you have to do market research you have to understand what is metaverse what is the future what is the market cap all these things if you understand it will be helpful for you to make a fruitful decision second it, you have to decide whether you're going to be a consumer or you're going to be a creator or you're going to be a content moderator in the metaverse okay and you have to look at the big picture. You, can, you should not look like you know, of a Bitcoin as a trading platform or a trade. No, Bitcoin was not originally intended for trading. It was, it has a completely different thing. You know, I, I might even talk about it in a separate session. But yeah, so do your research every time. Uh, don't believe in hypes. You have to, you know, be careful out there because it is all in a maturing stage. Right? It's not matured. It is in a very nascent stage. Okay, this is a number just to show you, like, you know, right now collectibles are being used for NFTs uh, and Metaverse is, you know, slowly gaining famous, you know, familiarity. Games are also using NFTs a lot. And if you look at here on the second image, you can see how the Metaverse uh, or the headset sales are going up, which means the projection, this is the projection, right? So, which means there are a lot of potential for Metaverse to grow as a content creator, as a, you, you can actually play games and earn money, right? You can put content and you can earn money. A lot of ways, a lot, a lot of opportunities will be opening up in the metaverse for earning as well. Okay, uh, so decentralized autonomous uh, organizations uh, are very similar to what I was speaking. Uh, it is just phase. It, it is apart from Facebook or Twitter. Uh, you will have decentralized organizations where data is spread across every everything. There is no one particular authenticator that says, okay, I'm gonna approve this, I'm gonna uh, reject this, no. It has to be everybody in the network who agrees, okay, this is a good information, I'm gonna accept it. So those are all the use cases that might come up uh, in the near, near future, okay? So in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip a lot of uh, things here and I'm gonna talk about decentralization. Uh, decentralization is the is the core of blockchain and it is the core of metaverse as well okay so that comes with privacy whatever information that you want to share is the only information that will be shared right so those are all the things that is uh, uh, the advantage of metaverses i've shown you the demo as well um, so i think we can go to the q a session right now okay i was talking about references right so this is the reference um the sites, the list of sites that I've used, you can actually take a screenshot if you want uh, and you know, go and look at it you know, at a later stage. I'm gonna just leave it here. I'm just gonna take some questions quickly. Okay, I see a lot of questions. Okay, certificates, probably you can check with Amrita. Uh, is there a possible web 2.0 front ending cloud, cloud services? Yes, it is. There are, there are a lot of things you can check. Uh, uh, Wix, uh, there is a site called Wix. You can Wix, W I X, right? You can check Wix. Um, how to settle at Metaverse? You cannot settle at Metaverse because Metaverse is uh, is a booming thing right now. It is just growing. I know people are using uh, Metaverse in a different world. I know uh, Decentraland uh, and uh, Sandbox is using for gaming. Uh, Lifer is using for business meetings and uh, it is using for professional networking. So you cannot settle. It takes time to settle. It is very in a in a in a growth curve. So you cannot settle right now. It might take few years to get settled. Does NFT change value? Yes, NFTs change value. Uh, and the value of NFT is dependent on the rarity. Okay. Uh, so if you have a rare uh, NFT, obviously the price of that NFT always goes up. 
Okay, IPFS, yes, obviously, I think a lot of people are asking IPFS, I've missed that as well. Um, I, IPFS is interplanetary, uh, inter, interplanetary file system. Okay, that is the file system sitting behind NFT as well. Okay, so what is it? It's very interesting. Uh, if you have used torrents a few years back, it's very similar. Okay, so you can, so file system in the internet, you can actually share some file right here to your colleague or your friend in US, right? But what about Mars? If you have a friend in Mars, not yet, but soon enough, if you have a friend in Mars and you want to share some file, what will be the format of file? Are you going to share it in a HTTP protocol? No, it is not possible, right? So that's why they're calling it interplanetary file system. So IPFS is the file system people are going to use in future when you are sharing data from one planet to another planet. Maybe when you're sending a selfie to your uh, cousin or your friend uh, in Mars. Okay, so that's IPFS. It's a very interesting topic. You have to go uh, deeper. We don't have time for that. So yeah, we'll do it in there. Okay. Uh, Bitcoin. Okay, there are a lot of questions about Bitcoin. Okay, Bit guys, I'm not the expert, crypto expert. Okay? I'm not, I, I've been in the blockchain industry from 2014. I have not invested in any of the cryptocurrencies, not even one penny. Okay, because, because I understand the risks. Okay. So don't ask me about any suggestions of cryptocurrencies. I'm not the right person for that. Do your market research. Okay, do your research. Uh, or, or that will all, always help you. Okay, currency levels, can it reach Bitcoin? No, please don't ask me those questions because I don't know. Okay, so I've not invested uh, in cryptocurrencies, but I'm actually a blockchain expert. I know cryptocurrency, I work on uh, digital currencies for my living, but I've never invested in one. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, things behind it. Please do your research. Uh, aim at providing augmented reality kind of uh, conferences. Yes, so the, okay, just look at these sites, no? Uh, just follow Techfully uh, or follow BAYC, follow Decentraland and LinkedIn, they are, uh, they are even LinkedIn, they are available in uh, Twitter. Please do and fo do, do follow them because they are going to launch a lot of stuff. You know that, that there was marriages in metaverse, there were meetings in metaverse. You will always get latest latest information how things are you know, progressing. So if you want to keep you know keep a close watch on these companies, you can actually get a lot of information upfront. Yeah, I think the recording is there, uh, so you will get the recording. Uh, I'm gonna. What is the process of minting an NFT? Minting an NFT is a big process. Uh, I I don't have time to tell you here, but maybe in a different session. Um, yes, it involves IPFS, it involves uh, OpenSea or any of the uh, NFT market out there. And then uh, you, it also involves you paying out money. Okay, so be careful because if you have to mint an NFT, you have to spend some money as well because that comes with the gas charges. Okay, we have not talked about blockchain and transactions, but it comes with a gas fee, which might be a little bit expensive depending on what uh, blockchain you're using or the um, uh, or the marketplace that you're going to use. Okay, how can you convert? uh videos or youtube videos into nfts that's a really interesting questions uh question you can um you have to do a little bit of research like how ipfs works how things actually you know how you can convert video into a different format uh it is possible um but the market is not matured enough uh that is a marketplace that, that is a decentralized youtube available just check that out i don't remember the name but that is available now you can just check okay governance we have to talk about governance right so there is no government here okay so about what about digital currency there is no government here i cannot govern how what is the price of bitcoin tomorrow i cannot guess that okay it is it is all dependent on a lot of other factors similarly metaverse you cannot govern things because it is all decentralized right but what will happen it's it's like a uh, it's like a psychology of things right so if everybody in that particular metaverse behaves properly when you log into the system you automatically do that okay you cannot go crazy you cannot say okay i want to jump from that building to this building if you do all these things 
it will look odd right you cannot do that in the real world like if, if let's say if you have to go for a business meeting you have to come in a suit right if you come in your uh, a different attire maybe a summer attire it, it will not go through you will never do that right if you have to do something productive you will never do that that is a form of uh, that is the exact thing that will be in place when metaverse comes in place you will automatically start following what people are doing now if the metaverse whatever metaverse that you're going to use if that is professional you're going to act professional if it is social you're going to be very social okay so there is no governance basically all right let me just stop here maybe amrita uh, i think from my side i'm i'm done and probably if you have anything you can just take it off okay last thing so this is my linkedin and uh, my youtube and uh, if you have personally connect with me you can have my uh, instagram as well but i will always be available on linkedin for any of your queries any of the technical questions in matter us thank you so much adeep this was very educational i must say even for myself and uh, yes the recording will be available please follow the future skills prime youtube channel i've shared the link on the chat and once again adeep i really enjoyed this session as usual and uh, i since since i see there are more than 30 questions i'm going to put you on the spot and i'm going to ask you all right if you would like to do another session i think if we can do a little deep dive on this um maybe with a couple of more experts uh, we'll plan something around that definitely definitely i'm actually open to that uh, we'll do that yeah sure thank you everybody thank you for joining us thanks everyone